Welcome back to the Savvy Campers. There's nothing worse than buying a used travel trailer only to find out that the water heater doesn't work or that there was a roof leak and the trailer has a water damaged subfloor that needs replaced or that there's just damaged walls or other items within a travel trailer. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with a used travel trailer and a lot of things some owners may try to hide or they may not even know. Today, we're gonna go over the seven most common things that you need to look for when you're buying a used travel trailer and these things you absolutely have to inspect before purchasing or else they can cost you thousands of dollars. All right, let's get started. On the electrical side of things, we're going to talk about GFCI outlets. So all of these outlets should be GFCI protected and that is a ground fault protected. They basically uh, make it so that it's harder for you to get electrocuted. And we found out in our travel trailer, actually when we purchased, that one of the outlets was not connected to a GFCI outlet and therefore it actually didn't work at all. So we were able to uh, use a, this little tester tool and we'll have a link down in the, in the description to find out which outlet wasn't working because it was miswired and therefore it would not have worked at all once we purchased. So glad that we caught it. The dealer was able to uh, take it in the shop and get it rewired um, and send us on our way before we took the trailer home. And if we wouldn't have done this, we would have actually had to take the trailer home, probably find out about it on a camping trip, and then bring it all the way back to the dealer, wait some time, and then get it back, and possibly have to pay if it was actually out of the warranty. So if you're buying a used travel trailer, you won't have a warranty. So you need to check your GFCI outlets, you need to check to see if all the outlets are working, even your outdoor outlet, and then you're gonna to wanna to go through your 12 volt system to ensure that all of your 12 volt system works. And one way you can do this is basically hook it up and try all of your items. All right, now we're gonna go on a field trip to the roof. So we're gonna to wanna to go and climb up on the roof and look for areas that maybe have a poor ceiling job or that just aren't sealed. Uh, when we purchased our travel trailer, there was actually a few areas on the front of the travel trailer that they had missed from the manufacturer. And there was interior leakage that we found. And we were able to negotiate the price down a little bit based off of those leaks, but we got it all repaired before. We just had to wait a little bit longer and uh, we saved some money. Um, when you're up on the roof, you're gonna wanna make sure that there's no soft spots. So make sure to kind of walk around the roof and, and kind of uh, you can use your hands to feel to make sure there's no soft spots because soft spots means th that water got in and that's not good to have on your roof. So go around, look at all of your exterior seals on your roof and make sure there's no soft spots. Now we're going to go, and this is a direct correlation to the roof, but we're gonna go look at the interior walls. So we can look at these top to bottom and all the cabinets, look everywhere to determine if there was any signs of damage from pre previous water infiltration. You will be able to tell if water had got in because you really can't fix it perfectly. You can see here in our example that it bubbled up the water or it bubbled up the wallpaper just a little bit and I've got this blue tape here to mark it for you guys and you can tell that there was water in there at one point. It's all fixed, it's all good to go but prolonged exposure to water in a travel trailer is not good. It can lead to mold growth, it can lead to damaged walls, it can lead to damaged subfloors, it can, it can really weaken and ruin a trailer. Water is the worst offender of this. So when you inspect the interior walls, you'll be able to tell a lot about how the previous owner took care of that travel trailer to see if they kept up on their seals. If there was ever a leak, um, you will be able to tell. So make sure to look behind every cabinet, behind every false panel, behind the couch, behind the bed, everywhere that you can get your eyes on, look for items that may have leaked. And you can look at the wallpaper, you can look at discoloration of wood, um, use your eyes and really be alert. One thing that many people overlook is tires. You go buy a travel trailer and you figure, hey, I don't care, like tires, whatever, I got a good deal. If you got a dual axle travel trailer, tires can be expensive. And when you do replace these, you want to put nice, 
good quality brand name tires on this so that you don't have a blowout in the future. A lot of tires are really only good for maybe five years on a trailer because they just don't get used a lot and they tend to dry rot and actually most of the time they dry rot from the inside so you won't even be able to know if your tire is damaged or not. Um, old tires you can tell if they're dry rotted from the outside but a lot of times they start from the inside so the inside is going to be a lot worse. So make sure to check the date codes and make sure to check the brand to make sure they're good and make sure to check your spare to make sure it's all aired up and make sure to look to make sure that there's no cracks, there's no nails, um, anything like that that can cause alert in, in you purchasing that travel trailer because if you need to repl replace tires, that's probably an $800 to $1,000 expense if you get nice ones. So make sure to check those out before you leave there or else you should probably do some negotiation and get five to 800 off the travel trailer price because you're probably going to need to replace them soon. So look at the date code right here. We've got the uh, week and the year um, that they were manufactured. And so check that out. Water heaters are great to have because that means that you get to take a nice hot shower after a long hike. So you want to make sure it works. When we purchased our travel trailer, and this was brand new right off the lot, we tested it on electric. And we just figured, hey, if it works on electric, it'll work because it's the same circuit board, but that does both. And guess what happened when we went on our when we went on our first boondocking experience? Yep, gas side did not work. It actually fired up, so the dealer probably tested it and it fired up, but about 15 to 30 seconds later, it shut off. And so what had happened was there was a malfunction in the circuit board and there was actually a recall, but the dealer did not catch it. And I just didn't think to test it on gas because it fired up real quick. And you know, when, when, you, when you test this, you have to leave it on, let it heat up, let it heat up for five or 10 minutes and, and get some hot water out of it because that's the last thing that you're going to want to have to repair. I think the circuit board, if we had to pay for it, was about $260. Plus, we would have had to pay a diagnostic fee if it wasn't under warranty. And we would have been out of our trailer for I, who knows how long. Uh, a couple weeks waiting at the dealer for them to diagnose and get the part in. So make sure to test the water heater on both electric and gas. And you do want to make sure to drain it out and smell for any anything that smells bad, any sulfur, because then you'll know that they didn't really take care of it, didn't rinse it out well, and that it needs some attention. If you, if you actually have a water heater that doesn't work, check out this video up here in the corner because we do have a full water heater repair guide video, or it's actually a troubleshooting video so that you can troubleshoot your water heater in case there is something wrong. So make sure to go check that out. Um, just in case you're having issues. Refri refrigerators on travel trailers are very expensive. They're $800 to $1,200 plus. So when you, when you inspect your travel trailer, make sure to test the refrigerator and if it's a 12 volt or whether it's a 12 volt, a propane or 120 volt, um, a lot of times there'll be propane slash 120. Uh, sometimes there'll be just propane and sometimes there'll be just 12 volt. But if it's a propane slash 120, uh, call the seller and have them turn it on on 120 volt and uh, make sure it cools down. And then when you get there, you can turn it off 120, leave it open for a little bit and turn it on 110 or excuse me on um, turn it on propane and then you can go out, pull the outside off and you can see if the propane pilot lights on because that's what draws the heat out of the refrigerator so you'll know that it's working on propane. So make sure, to bring your laser thermometer and we'll have one of those linked down in the description so that you can test the refrigerator, make sure it's cooling on both gas and electric. And also check the freezer to make sure that's cold enough as well. Awnings are great, especially electric ones. The problem with awnings is that they tend to mold. Ours molded up and it's really hard to get it out and we do have a special cleaning solution that we've linked down in the description as well for this, but make sure that that the awning is not all moldy because it's kind of gross and it, it's tough to clean. It takes a lot of elbow grease. So make sure that you check the awning for mold. And when you do that, always check for operation. The motors in these electric awnings are not the best 
and they tend to break. And these awnings are not cheap. They could be 1200 to 2000 plus for an awning repair. So make sure to test the operation in and out. And you can actually look to see if the owner has lubricated the awning, make sure they've taken care of it and make sure it goes in and out evenly both sides. If you're looking for more help on inspecting your travel trailer before you purchase, go to SavvyCampers.com slash inspection course, and we have 66 full walkthrough videos on how to inspect a used travel trailer prior to purchase. And we also have accompanying spreadsheets as well as a guide on to how much repair costs will be for some of these items. So it's very helpful. It's very helpful to go through and you can actually um, go through item by item. And if something doesn't work, you can note it down. And I've got a little repair cost in there for you so that you can go negotiate with the seller so you can get that price off of your travel trailer. Therefore, you can save money and you can save time by not having to take it to the dealer for a repair. You'll know upfront before you purchase, and then you can go order the parts and hopefully fix it yourself. So make sure to go check that out. I'll have a link down in the description for you to easily go take a peek at that course. And it's very helpful and you're sure to save your money, whether it's in time or money when you're searching for a new RV. So check that out. And we do have a coupon code for you guys that have stuck around this long and it is used and you can save 15% off that course if you buy it now. All right, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more info that we have. If this was helpful to you, make sure to subscribe and give us a like so others can, can take this knowledge and use it to buy a travel trailer for themselves and find a good one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.